every single day because you're concerned about the people of the world, but you also have an eye on the conditions of the church, and you're trying to keep your eyes on Jesus and all at the same time. And then, Cooper, I'm being real with y'all. I'm telling you. Sometimes I have to remind myself here when you're not crazy. <laughs> He's real. Yes, he is. Because sometimes, sometimes the road gets rough. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cooper, sometimes the going gets really tough. Yes, sir. And our normalcy has changed so dramatically, there is no norms. Be real. What's normal about a mask in worship? What's normal about not getting a hug? Arms bump. Being able to see your grandchildren. Folk not want to get vaccinated, but breathe all over you. What's more about that? People taking their last breath. Their final breath. And then asking for the vaccine. What is more about that? What's more about that? And I'm going to get the preacher. We are in a two-year pandemic that has shifted from being something that we thought was for the elderly and pre-existing illnesses to something that's hitting our babies, filling up the hospital with young people. And we all have come to a place where there's no more Norms. And we are in a place now that the invisible virus that takes your breath away literally leaves you with, watch this now, having to believe what you didn't believe. I was amazed. You know, we missed it. We didn't want to give God his praise. He said, if everything that had blood, praise the Lord. And this pandemic robbed you of your breath. And before you died of this COVID-19, your lungs failed. They can give you oxygen, but the place that you have the ability to breathe no longer operates. So you literally suffocate to death. Now just think about it for a minute. The pandemic deals with the breath that you went through. Now you've been giving his breath for years before Craig and you ain't giving him no prayer. It's like God is calling us to account that some of us who've been given the blood pleasure of breathing today okay. woke up, ate our bacon and eggs, but didn't say thank you. <laughs> Went through a week of breathing his free oxygen with his lungs yeah. and never said thank you. Yeah. Some of us after doing things we are ashamed of, he covered us and kept us, but we never turned back and said thank you. There's somebody right now that is doing something opposite of preparing for worship. Someone else is preparing for a job around the world, but few of us, if any of us, are really being grateful to God for just one more breath. But I hope there's somebody who will be caught up to what I'm trying to say. The Bible is clear. God wants his praise. Now, this is how he demands it. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. If you do, you are the praise.
Luke 15. I was a man to get your cooperation. And that's an accident that you read all of this at home. Amen? Amen. Luke chapter 15.
the back of the field of the children, I will give you. Amen. Most stellar boys, stunned and firm, as I have went into a rage, his response was, he should have said this a long time ago. There is a satanic movement that is trying to separate fathers from the soul. Give me a few minutes. I argue my case. Give me three points, and I take my seat. In the book of Genesis, we have two chapters that are given to us, or that is given to us, where man do no sin. Chapter 1 deals with the creation of man in this world and in the universe. Chapter 2 goes deeper into the creation of man and that we are the made in the image of God. In chapter 2, God looks at man who he has created, given him the authority of all the earth, and he said, it's not fit for them to be alone. In that season, in the antiquity of the text, the Lord saw fit to make sure man had a companion. And what he did, Sister Michaela, is what most people get in error, and this is why most of us are off track. Say thank you. He took the man and put a wound, put him in his feet, and put a wound in his side. W O M D. When he took the wound, and open it up, he bought from them a rib, made the woman from the rib, and they were, she was given a name by Adam, woman, meaning womb, womb of man. One man. I say thank you again. That's why you never call, because Jesus called her Mary Mama. He always called a woman. Making sure a woman always don't stay in your created order. Uh -oh. Yeah, I will. So, <laughs> I know I'm deep, but it's okay. That's what I can say. <laughs> so, the woman was designed to be the help me. The womb of man. Now, when you did your research and study, when God was creating the, the human race, and creating all that he would give us, he did it in an order, because God is a God of order. And he did it in such a way that you can never deny that he is the maker. Right. So to make sure you would never deny God, he put his signature in your mouth. Mm -hmm. So in your mouth, you got his letters on your teeth. Right. Each one of your teeth got three teeth. It's a Y, H, and a W. When you look at his name that he gave on Mount Sinai to Moses, it's Yahweh with it's all continents and no vibes. And the other thing. And the letter is a Y, a W, and an H. So whether you want to acknowledge him or not, not, when I look in your mouth, his name is in your mouth. Y'all still don't like me there. So he's a God of order, and he wants you to always know that in order to be his, you got to have some order. And what has happened in our world is we've forgotten that God is a God of order and we can now establish our own order. So in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, when there was no sin, man was in order, and this is how it looks, Sister Judy. God, man, woman, children. But when Satan shows up in chapter 3, this is why you should come to Bible class, this is what you get, is when he shows up, he doesn't talk to man. Because man was too close to God, Deacon Granberry. Because man was always showing up to church for meeting with God because him and God would meet on the cool of the day. And because he was so close to God, there was no way for the devil to get in. But because the woman came from man, she was able to be able to talk to the serpent. And the serpent got in the woman and began to talk to her. So chapter 3, the first time you hear a woman talk is to who? 
Satan himself, a serpent. And what the serpent was trying to do was distract the woman from being under the man's leadership so that they, she could divide, so he could divide the father and son's relationship. I'm going somewhere. So what happens is the man was to be made one, and when his other half talked to him about what was going on with the serpent, because the woman has always been gorgeous, and when he looked at her, he said, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, for this cause should I leave my mother and father and cleave to my wife. Well, you missed it right there. He really was saying, God, you might have been everything, but she showed sure up. what I want, because y'all, y'all missed it. And it's not the first time y'all don't shout too quick that me and Deacon Granberry left God for a woman. Some of y'all right now need to ask God to forgive you, because the only reason you are even here, it ain't because you love the Lord. You came to look at somebody you forgot on TikTok last night. I thought it was the strangest thing. Brother Wombo, he, he was going up to women and he would ask them, can I get your panties? And I'm like, why ain't nobody slapped him yet? He go right up to him like, listen, I know it's going to be a strange question, but if you give me my, your panties, I got something to give you. Can I give you, can you just give me my panties? And do you understand women was entertaining his idea of just giving up the panties? And I was wondering, I said, he get away with that because I remember in some of you girls that you couldn't just ask a woman for her pen. You, you really can ask her for your nut. You can tell me and you can talk. Some of us know you can ask a woman back in the day for a number and you would get cussed out and you would be y'all act like y'all don't know how y'all act. You, you know, I remember I was riding the DOT. I had a little crush on a young lady asking for a number and this is what she told me. Nigga, I can't get my, my number, you ride the DOT with me. What do I look like giving you my number? Can I tell you, it's sometimes the things are changed and those are men now can say what they want to women and they are desiring these women and what happens, they will do anything to get the woman panties. And what happens to us, many of us have got to a place we forgot the order of God and now we're living on the order of Satan. And we're chasing where God gave us to be our help me and make it in our God. Preach from the I will. Some of y'all are up in here sad because of a woman, but God been too good to you because he done brought you through too many danger. See, can I talk to my women? Some of you are still tripping over a man, but you got the best man when you got Jesus. I want to hear the no, you can't get nothing better than a true cat named Jesus Christ. He comes from Galilee, and you know he'll set you free. Tell you something. I can't prepare and I think I'm a good husband. I think that I've done some things that I can say. I'm a cool cat, Mr. Gary. Mr. Gary has taught me how to love my wife. I can believe Mr. Gary loves when I walk in the room. She may not, but I believe it. Can I tell you what that means? I believe that she really enjoys my time. But it's something that I can't do. When she gets to a place where she needs somebody to rock her to sleep at night, I don't have the tone to do it. I can hold her, but I can't get rid of the pain in her heart. I can't get in that brokenness. And I cannot whisper that no sweet nothing to the ear that I never need you nor forsake you. There is only one person. There is only one person I can call who can't nobody calm her soul.
Whenever you look at the movement of God, you see there is an attack on the father-son relationship. This is good news right here. No matter the attack, God never gives up on what he's trying to do through humanity. So watch this real quick. I'm going to walk you to the text. Okay. Watch this now. When you find Abraham, he had to leave his father's house. Yeah. But when he leaves his father's house, he becomes wealthy and he needs a son. The devil attacked the womb of Sarah and it was barren, so he could not get a son. And then when the son show up, Jesus, God wants to know, Yahweh wants to know, how committed are you to me? Because I'm committed to bless you. But are you committed to give me back what I bless you with? And he takes his son Isaac on a mountain. And God literally waits until he takes the knife to sacrifice Isaac. Hold the angel, hold back Abraham in. Say, no, there's a ram in the thicket in the figure that I will supply a lamb. And what the devil was trying to do was trying to hinder the movement of God by trying to separate the father from the son. But what God was doing was letting us know that the most important relationship in order to restore what's been broken is the father-son relationship. The devil was trying to make sure that Sarah stayed buried. God made sure that he eyes and made it here. And all the way through antiquity, you will find in the Old Testament the devil kept attacking the son that God wanted to use, trying to separate them from the father. When you deal with Jacob, when you deal with Jacob and Joseph, he had to separate the Joseph from his father because he put in the mind of Reuben and put in the mind of Sam and put in the mind of his brothers to try to mistreat. Joseph, because God wanted to bless the son. I need to pause right here before I get to If you are a blessed child of God, you ought to know there's some attacks on your life to separate you from the Father. It's all Please pray again. Y'all already know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. Can I go in real quick? Because some of you are literally being vessels of Satan because you're being used to separate the Father from the Son. And what you have been doing is doing everything to keep them from talking to the Father, walking with the Father, doing with the Father. Can I pause for a minute for that sister that always talk about their baby daddy? Negro, you slept with them. You had a relationship with them. Y'all went out to eat. If you can have that baby, you tell me y'all can't work out how to raise a child. I am so sick of women that carry babies and make them dead and don't have no relationship with the father that the seed came from. I know you got all the excuses in the world. Come on. <laughs> uh, he did this to me. Yeah. You didn't say that when you laid down. Oh. He don't do this right. You did not say that when you laid down. <laughs> and now, because you don't like him, or better yet, he don't like you. I know I'm on my way to, but the enemy has always been using this method. Divide the father from the son. Divide the children from the seed. Okay. Divide the blessing from the one who is able to bless it. Y'all so quiet as you're trying to do this movement of Satan is so embedded in some of y'all, you won't get this message. But it's the truth. There's only one group of people that has ever really saw the power that comes from the Father blessing the Son. It is the Jewish people. We've gotten to a place, we got fathers that don't pray. Yeah. Some of them don't even get to put their hands on their sons. Yeah. And watch this. The only one can bless the seed, say thank you. Yeah. Mama, you can pray yourself. Do you sweat? Do you fall out? Do you prostrate? Do you saturate? God will move and answer your prayer. But in the Bible, it is 
only the father or the eldest son that has the authority to lay the hand on the future of the family. You want to know what's wrong with family? Look where the father's at. Preach what the air I will. Come here. If there's your family, he's been, okay. he's been trying to separate us from our children that we may not put our hands on them and bless them for the next generation. And guess what he's been doing to you to do it? The same one that carried the seed. Yes, sir. <laughs> not only Joseph and Jacob, but David and Simon. If you want to see God work, so mighty works, look how he used the father and the son. David was a great king. He was a killer and an assassin. But when he got ready to build the temple, he said, no. He didn't say it was for your wife to do. He didn't say it was for no, none of your military folk to do. He didn't say it. He said, this is for your son to do. Okay, come here, come here. And then when you get to the New Testament, and they were given the power of the Holy Spirit, God, and you see the movement of a New Testament. And what happens in the New Testament? In order for the world to be saved, a son had to show up. Yeah. But he was sent by a father. And when he was at 12 years old, his mother asked, what are you doing? He told his mama, don't you know? I got to be about Oh, 
church and that much money and could have come ahead and paid for a little time. And I told the Lord, Lord, I ain't got nowhere to stay. I want nowhere to go. Daddy said, I can't come home. And I ain't had no good praying skills. But this wasn't going to ask me as I laid me down on the sweet time. I'm sitting in the back of my 1981 column. None of my financial aid came in. And I talked to him. And Rob Johnson called me. He said, T, I heard you ain't got no place where to stay. I said, no, I ain't got no place. He said, uh, I ain't know that, T. I said, yeah, I ain't got no place to stay. I got the friend. He said, I'm going to go find you somewhere to stay today, man. You can't be out with nowhere to stay. I'm thinking he's going to let me stay with him. <laughs> but he said, no, I'm going to find you a place to stay. Uh -huh. He had a red shabbat. While I'm working. All day. Came to get his hair fixed and see I found the guy. He got a two bedroom apartment. He's never there. He's really paid up. And he said you can come stay with him and don't worry about it.
that happens when you get connected to the Father. I'm not talking about just the biological daddy. I'm talking about that one that said, how I look like. Some of you can, can identify and witness that when you know the Father in heaven, there is something that becomes unbreakable between you and him. See, everybody don't know your relationship and how close y'all are. But you know what he's done for you. And when, you, when you've been in a relationship with the Father, there can be some haters that will show up, but they can't separate you from the Father. There, there may be some storms that will rise up, Sister Grant, but you, they can't stop you from giving the Father the glory. There may be some individuals, even in your family, that question your relationship with the Father, but you know that he's been with you in danger of sin and unseen and the perilous times, and you know that I got a Father who will never leave me or forsake me. I got some connection that you can't, you can't separate me from. And I, I, I just believe that somebody in here, that he's been
No son of mine can look like he belongs to. He said, bring me that ring. No son of mine can walk around like a servant. He's the son of the king. And I'm done now. But this is why the devil was always trying to mess up a father-son relationship. It's because he knows how much the father loves his son. And can I give this to everybody? He knows how much the father loves his children. And whenever he tried to attack the father, he tried to separate the children from the father. But he can't separate the father from his son because the God I serve has done something that made it unbreakable, made it unsufferable, made it in a way that the devil cannot destroy it. Fire can't burn it, and water can't drown it, storm can't wash it away, shoes can't separate me from it. What do you mean? Somebody told me here, now in the book of Romans, chapter 8, nothing can separate me from the love of God. There's somebody in here that knows that nothing can separate you from the love of God. Trying 
to separate the father son relationship. When Jesus shows up, the enemy believes by killing Jesus, he can separate the father son relationship. This is how much the father loves you. I'm done now. In Adam, all men died because of this sin. But because Jesus came in a sinless place of Adam, and he knew no sin. Because Jesus showed up to do the Father's will. And he was the law giver. And he knew no sin. The devil can take the same tricks, the same trials, the same methods that he tripped Adam on. Try to do it to Jesus. And it won't work. So when he tried to kill Jesus, he couldn't kill him. Jesus said, I gotta take my life down. <laughs> Because I have a sin against my father. So my father will not allow me to die unless I lay my life down. They put nails in his hands. They put thorns on his head. They whipped him all night long because he laid his life down. The father, he had a relationship with this man, with his son from eternity past to eternity present and on the cross. Jesus said, Father, Father, why now forsake me? For the first time in all eternity, in all of eternity, was God the Father and God the Son in separation. And I did my studies, I did my background check. I wanted to find out, Sister May, who I was in, that the Father and Son relationship was broken. Why was it that the Father was saying a son that was righteous, a son that was holy, and a son that was sinless? I was wondering uh, why he turned the back uh, on the sun that good. Uh, because my God is so good uh, and my father is so wonderful. Uh, I turned my back on the one uh, who I knew we could handle uh, what she should have been in. Uh, I turned my back on him uh, so I didn't have to turn my back on you. Uh, and somebody in here, thank God, because I was so good. Somebody!
make you look like a fool because you don't have a plan. Amen. So don't vote for foolishness or plan. Draw the line because you go down with them. They're going to pull on you. Sure as I'm telling you. So you don't vote for foolishness or plan. You pray over there, you vote. And if you don't need all that, you need some evidence. All you got to do is get Trump. He was keeping the support of the other friend. There is absolutely no reason Trump was president. Amen. <laughs> he got there because he was foolish and he had some money. Yeah. Uh-huh. Amen. You understand what I'm talking about? So we all go to our prayer. And we want to pray that God leads. And I've met them on several occasions. We pray that God leads them to Merrill's. I see greater work for him. But as he goes, stay home. Keep doing what he's doing. Make sure he let us know. He loves us so we can go home. Love you. Yeah. That's everywhere in the United States. Yeah. Do not vote with your family. Do not vote with foolishness. Vote in your favor. That means pray on it. But make sure you vote. Do you hear me? Because this next thing, we don't want we don't nobody to come over there. Did you tell me? I don't want another person in no seat that don't know what they do. I don't care if I'm the one to see them. I don't know what I I know they want my stuff to do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, let's stay here. Amen. Yeah, I'll come to see I don't want to be cooking no cake for y'all. <laughs> I can't even make collard greens and cornbread. You don't want me in that seat. Amen. Amen. You don't want me in that order. <laughs> Run your body. I don't want to no seat that I'm not qualified. All right, all right, all right. And if you my friend, sister, Scott, you better tell me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know you ain't ready. Give your gift on here with my time. Cash out. Make sure you put the tithes and the debt show offering to see you so you're ready to go home. Let me say this. He's the action man. Uh, I can't say this enough. Some of y'all are not vaccinated. And I know some people got offended. I could care less. Amen. You are dumb. Amen. If you don't get that shot, meet me outside. <laughs> I'll let you know how dumb you are. I got four million reasons why you don't. <laughs> Give me a shot. All right? Father, we thank you for the privilege to serve you. We thank you for the gift and the giver. We thank you for Brother Tim Bryan. We pray that you bless his narrow election, bless his administration, bless his mind. Lord, let him stay true to who you are. Draw close to you because this is a job that needs an anointing on him. Yeah. Lord, that you would give us the leadership, godly leadership, and godly decisions that will please you enough to bless the pioneer here with the renaissance that is not just felt downtown and around the city, but felt right in the homes of your people. We thank you so much for what you've done. We thank you for all that you're getting ready to do. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Now the heaven today we keep you from falling our own wise God. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all our children say that. We thank you for watching this video and we pray that you'll be with us at 8 o'clock and 1030 in person service on this Sunday. Thank you for watching this.